All right, man, let's get into this judge attack. So we, we didn't talk about this when it happened, because I think it happened literally when we were recording last week. Yeah. When it started going viral. Uh, it happened like the, the third or the fourth. But I got to tell y'all folks, man, y'all are some un great. Y'all have no grace. Y'all folks are mm. harsh, evil people. Yeah. Because y'all keep trying to paint this man like he don't have a disability. Like he don't. And as somebody who has family who is a uh, bipolar schizophrenic, I understand what this stuff can do to you. I, I know it can make you pull up to your neighbor, whip out and start jacking. You know, it can make you do some crazy stuff. And it can also be violent in some natures. And I understand this man has had a, a history of violence, but that only shows it only goes to show a systematic failure. I don't understand why that keeps getting left out. Like I see so many people say, oh, this black man is out here hurting women and all this other stuff. Yes. Because the system is allowing him to be fit to fail. He shouldn't be out on the streets he if should, he's or he should be in heavily monitored. Or he should be heavily monitored. And he should be medicated and he should have counseling on a regular basis. And he should have been monitored until we knew that like he until medical professionals knew that he was okay to be out in the general public. Because if he is a violent bipolar schizophrenic, which Bipolar schizophrenic people aren't always violent, but, they but can if, be. if he specifically, because it's bipolar and sch- schizophrenic people have been demonized in the media for a very long time. So I did want to make that specific differentiation, but this man specifically has violent tendencies. So if he has violent tendencies, then he should be treated differently I don't and think he people- should be separated I don't think people understand what's how schizophrenia even happens. So, like, you can literally live 20-something years of your life normal as everybody else around you. Mm-hmm. And then you turn 23 and 24, and a motherfucker's saying, hey, you should just grab that motherfucker's gra- back jacket. You should just take that motherfucker's co- coat. You know, you're a dumbass. You should jump off this. Like, there's a motherfucker who just starts talking to you at 23. This nigga's just saying, saying the wildest shit to you. And you know what happens at 23? Usually, in general, that's when your cognitive um, functions finish getting developed. Your frontal lobe finishes developing around 23 years old. 23, 25. But I'm saying, like, your brain is literally fermating itself <laughs> incorrectly. Like, you hearing shit while you out here just walking around. Like, that's what people don't understand. That is scary as hell. Being a, hold on, hold on, before you do that. Being a, a, a paranoid, schizophrenic, bipolar, that is scary as hell. For that shit to start, for that shit to start in a way, and you not even just to be able to understand, you, you over here experiencing it in real time. You don't know what's going on. These voices just started out of nowhere. Yeah. And then this is the black man. So obviously, like, if you're black and you have mental health issues and you're a criminal because of these mental health issues, like, you're not going to be treated with the fragility that you should be treated with. Talk about it. And with the sensitivity that you should be treated with because you are a sick person, you're going to be treated like a criminal. So after this bipolar schizophrenic man attacked this judge, which was very hard to watch regardless, like it was very violent and everyone who was a victim of this violence did not deserve this. But after this happened, they threw the book at him. So that's Mr. what Martin, I want to play for you. Have you a copy of the criminal complaint this morning? Yes, I have for you, ma'am. You're being charged with count one, attempt murder, victim 60 years of age or older, a felony. Count two, battery on a protected person resulting in substantial bodily harm, victim 60 years of age or older, a felony. Count three, extortion by threat, a felony. Count four, intimidating a public officer, a felony. Count five, six, seven, eight, and nine are all battery on an officer. It's over 10 counts. The same name victim. Oh, and by the way, I do not know any of the other victims named in the criminal complaint. Uh, those are all felony offenses. Count 10, performance of act or neglect of duty and willful or wanton disregard of safety or persons of property resulting in substantial bodily harm or death, a felony. Battery on a protected person, count 11, that's a gross misdemeanor offense. 
Count 12, battery by a prisoner of felony. Count 13, unlawful act related to human Shit. excrement God, or dang. bodily fluid, a felony. All allegedly occurring on January 3rd of 2024. Do you understand these charges? Like, these folks really think they doing something in regards to uh, throwing all of these charges on this fucking mentally ill man. That is crazy. He has 13 counts. Like, they really... Like and and you can just tell this is obviously a conflict of interest because these folks are in the same circles. Y'all literally judge in the same uh, district, so y'all go to events and all this short shit together. And then they want to make an example of him too. And it's that's it, also it, it the sucks. thing. And like I, I had this exchange with someone on Twitter the other day because these folks is just so there's like no grace given to people, and they try to take like they try to project other people's experiences like it's their own. So this person. Basically was like uh, in response to him being in front of the judge, the same judge that he attacked in regards to, uh, you know, what he initially was being charged with. Now your goofy ass is in there like Hannibal Lecter about to serve even more time. And the individual that I am, I say, you know, you're talking down on a black man suffering from mental health issues. Mm -hmm. And I also show where it shows that he's a, a bipolar schizophrenic. She says, I'm talking about a black man with multiple domestic violent charges who's danger to others at this point in time regardless of diagnosis be well and it's just like it's when it comes to us it's so ableist and y'all it's so ready to shit on us at any time when it comes to black men but these white people when this happens they don't do that they band together and say he has a mental health issue when he goes up and shoots a school that's a mental health issue regard we, we have to protect him regardless of the fact that he has domestic abuse claims uh, charges those charges should not have happened because had he had the proper care that he should have had with all of the mental health issues that he does have then maybe this would have not happened in the first place if he had been medicated properly if he was maybe in a facility that was taking care of him properly like these people would not have been assaulted if he had the proper care and that's what y'all need to focus on versus the fact that he did do this in the first place and he needs to be punished things like we need to think more critically about things and it can't we can't just think about things surface level like this because what the fuck is it going to do for us in the long run as human beings and it's such a gender like people look at this as such a gender base because i even saw people comparing this situation to the boy who was autistic in florida Mm -hmm. who attacked the teacher. Yeah. And they were trying to compare that like he should be thrown the book in the same situation. No, neither of them should be thrown the book. Both of them need to be evaluated, monitored, medicated properly, and put in environments where they can thrive and not be in positions to hurt other people if they have violent tendencies, period, point blank. Like, what is wrong with y'all? It's no grace. And, and like... When y'all see the black man out here, y'all just feel like it's just an opportunity to kick the, the nigga back in. That's at the end of the day, that's just it's what it is. It's very sad. And it's like, it's like we jump at it at every opportunity. Again, on this show, we're going to kick everybody back in. We're going to kick niggas back in. We're going to kick uh, white people back in. We're going to kick an Asian back in. And I'm pretty sure we're going to kick an Indian or two back in. Y'all read of Mice and Men in high school, and Lenny got killed because he was – a little mentally disabled and doing some stuff he shouldn't have been doing. And y'all were like, you know what? This is what we need to do to them. Instead of getting them help, Lenny should have got help. Y'all was the y'all was the type of kids on <laughs> high school. That was his name, right? Yeah. In a, of mice and men. I didn't read that. The, we didn't. Oh. We didn't get that. That wasn't a sign. We had, we had we had Huckleberry Finn and Nigger Jim. Damn. Let me let me Google that real quick before I look like a dumbass. But Nick, I think his name was Lenny. Nigger Jim was the person I read about in high school. So that was that was the nigga who I had to. Had to read up on was nigger Jim. And oh my god! Finn. Shout out to them niggas. Yo. We didn't. I was in New York, so they wasn't letting y'all. They was letting my teacher was black. My okay, teacher so was black and letting them white boys say nigger Jim. Oh my god! I felt uncomfortable. I told her I didn't like that. I felt like she sold me out. Yeah. So Lenny, Lenny was the one that had to 